Today we'll be giving a demonstration of McAfee's Dynamic Endpoint Defense. Dynamic Endpoint Defense is the realization of Intel Security's Protect, Detect, Correct, and Adapt strategy. This is an intelligent multi-layer approach that ensures your infrastructure will be defended, have higher efficacy and performance than ever before, and requires less steps to manage and report. The funnel on the left represents how most threats are quickly detected and filtered, followed by containment of threats which are naturally less in numbers, then down to the funnel bottom where new targeted attacks can be detected and remediated by analytical hunting. Endpoint threat defense is entirely different than prior endpoint security in that it's behavior-based and not entirely dependent on signature-based techniques, has an intelligent feed for threat information, and can remediate and adapt to remove threats entirely. New user workflows have been implemented to reduce the number of clicks, and EPO's user interface has improved as well, providing more visibility and information for more efficient management. So let's get into that demonstration. So now we've switched to the virtual machines, and in this virtual machine, you'll notice I have an EPO server running, and in this EPO server, we have a number of tools, uh, such as our ENS and our, our MAR active response tool running, along with TIE DXL. And then I have a couple of virtual machines running as well, uh, some remote desktop clients sitting on our desktop. In this demonstration, we're going to provide an overview of the difference between standard threat prevention and what our adaptive threat protection will do for you. So threat prevention is based on standard AV using signatures. Adaptive threat protection is based on heuristics and behavior. And this is our machine learning and our dynamic application containment capability. And we'll notice how our threat prevention doesn't catch all the malware that we have. So uh, we're going to see the difference between the two and we'll get into our demonstration. So now let's open up a folder that I have that has a bunch of malware in it. Um, first thing we're going to do is we're going to scan this for threats, so just using our standard threat protection. So I'm going to right click on these files and I'm going to scan for threats. And we'll notice that in the background a window pops up and we'll notice that uh, things start happening, right? Uh, events start happening and it starts propagating what it sees. Now it's scanning for threats, and we'll see it starts showing items scanned, and in the background we're going to see how it catches it. So we'll move this over to the side a little bit. We'll let it continue to scan. It's going to take a couple minutes. We'll see that it caught one. We'll notice that it was through the on-demand scanned. And we'll start seeing a number of items pop into this screen. And we'll keep refreshing. Okay, so it looks like our scan is done. So let's go ahead and check our back screen here. And we'll notice that the scan's complete. There were 23 items scanned. There's only 15 detections of those 23 items. Now, if we remember correctly, if we look back at our folder, there's only about 12 items in here. So there are 12. Um, actually, there were 12, and you'll notice some of them were deleted. And we'll see that some of the action that was taken was delete actions or continue scanning and alert actions, depending on the type of malware that it found. Right? You'll see some of these, though, they're all threat prevention on-demand scans. That's it. So it didn't do anything extra, and there were a number of items that were not found as malware. Next, we're going to show the difference between the threat prevention and the advanced threat protection, showing its heuristics versus just relying upon signatures. So we're opening command prompt, and you'll notice that we are in SQL and backslash malware, and we're going to run this command, and it's basically starting all the malware in that folder um, that's left. And remember, we have some malware left in that folder, and there's a number of pieces that were not caught by our standard uh, threat prevention. Um, and we're running it with a timeout of 15 seconds in between, no break between all the different files and we are going to run it. You'll see that it's going to start and a number of things are going to happen. Um, as this runs, you'll see the things say the application was unable to start correctly. Um, that's because it's actually trying to run the malware, but it's not 
being able to run because of the fact that one of our solutions is catching it. So let's back at it, look back at our events now and you'll see there's 19 events that were caught. And in here, not only do we have these threat prevention functions, but we also have the advanced adaptive threat protection capabilities. You'll notice things keep popping up on our screen um, that are con going to continually be caught and we'll watch how this works. So I let a little time progress and you'll notice that we now have 39 events and a number of items actually popped up from our adaptive threat protection from a real protect cloud capability. So it actually analyzed via our cloud and our client. Um, and what it did was it cleaned it. So it took a little extra time and, and did those things. Um, so some really interesting stuff happened. You'll also notice at the bottom when we click on these items, it gives us more detail about what happened with that piece of malware. So it goes, you, goes to show you the information about the analyzer detector information, what it did with the threat, the source, the target, and a lot of other information as to what it caught. And now we'll turn our attention over into EPO to see some of the information that it grabbed and to see where some of our workflows go. So this is our main dashboard, the EPO summary. Uh, there are a number of dashboards already in here. These are pre-canned when you check in the solution for endpoint security. You'll notice things such as the adaptive threat protection enforced events, observed events. I've created one that gives us kind of an overview of what we've done. I call it the adaptive threat protection events. And in here, you'll see that the endpoint security currently enabled technologies it shows me uh, all the different technologies within my environment. It shows some of the real protect uh, events, right? Real protect client versus real protect cloud. And then some threat analysis of how it was actually caught these 16 different events. Um, and then some of the threat protection cleaning events that took place right as well. So malware detected, prompted, reputation, that's how it saw it via the reputation, whether it was GTI or TIE reputation. So there's a number of things that we can get from our EPO dashboard. Let's go ahead and look in at some of our threat events. You'll see in our threat event log that there are a number of things that happened within the last hour. Let's expand this last seven days, some of the events that we've seen. You'll notice that we saw things such as uh, the adaptive threat protection clean events. Those were things that happened earlier when we were testing our ENS capability. Then we also have some containment capabilities, right? You'll notice it shows right here that real protect containment via reputation, dynamic application control. And if we scan all the way to the bottom, you'll notice there are some file infected, malware detected. This is based on our threat protection that we initially ran, like a traditional virus scan, right? Based upon uh, standard signature sets. So hopefully you enjoyed this demonstration of the difference between our standard uh, threat protection versus our adaptive threat protection capabilities. And if you have any other questions, please, uh, Contact your local McAfee person and um, hope you'll learn some more. Thanks.